Hi guys. How are you? How are you guys doing? Hey, welcome. You guys are early here, huh? <laughs> Check one, two. Yep, check one, two. Is that okay? Can you hear my voice? So my name is Hassan Hajeri. I am from Bahrain, but I recently moved to Sharjah. Well, by recently, I mean six months ago. And I'm now sort of managing the new music department at the Sharjah Foundation. But I also do music. I have a PhD in music from South Korea, where I studied music composition. I did my master's in Tokyo. That decision to become like a musician, it wasn't a one moment thing. It happened over a series of kind of moments, you know, like. But I think it mostly happened when I was doing my master's degree in Japan. That was when I was most serious about it. So I would go to university, study, come back to my room and practice music, you know. And, and then I'd get a phone call or a message saying, hey, would you like to play music in this venue or in this venue? I started performing different gigs. And I used to go and follow certain musicians around Tokyo. And we became really good friends. And, and you know, I'd get, they became sort of mentors to me. And so it was there where I started recording my own music. I start writing my own music. Of course, the music that I did back then sounds very different than what I do now, but um, I think the seed of the idea of becoming um, you know, a musician started there. So my name is Safil Blushi. I'm Emirati Russian. I was born and raised in Dubai. I'm uh, currently working as a research assistant, as a Kawadar fellow with the Music and Sound Cultures Research Group here at NYU Abu Dhabi. My job is mainly to do a lot of field recordings and capturing traditional music in the UAE and uh, analyzing that and, and putting it out to the public. I'm also I'm a research assistant working on my own research project, uh, focusing on the urban environmental sound in, in, in Abu Dhabi. Outside of that, I'm a, I'm a sound artist and I'm very much interested in sound studies as a focus of um, grounding my artistic practice. It was, um, I was trained classically as a pianist uh, when I was young because my mom being Russian thought that like, you know, me being half Russian, I have to learn the piano. And I didn't want to as, as a child, I wanted to focus on sport, on football. When I got into high school, I realized that, okay, I actually wanted to study music, but more on the cultural side of things, so ethnomusicology. But I, I kind of changed things when I took this course on music programming and at that point I also started having conversations with you know who does this around the UAE and I um, kind of just quite literally like delved right into it and I like this idea of like experimental practice when I see how like how the family comes together. I knew that I wanted to do something music based but I didn't know quite what it was until that moment I'm like hey, this is what it is like that's what I've been waiting for um, pretty much. I'm Maki Alvarez. I'm X. 
and we are Marathon YY. Y-Y. So we're, we're a couple, we're married, we have four kids, we are based in Sharjah. No, and what? three kids. <laughs> Why do you mean that? <laughs> Including you. <laughs> Why did I say four kids? I Maybe know. I have that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think we enjoy playing music. That's it. Going back to Philippines, I, I played there. So when my my parents know that I'm playing music, they support me. So that's the the go signal that I, I think I, I I'll be a musician. Like what I said before, my main weakness is public speaking and interview so for me like music is like a self-expression and I'm able to tell my stories through our music so yeah I guess that pushed me to get, can more express myself when when performing and like that's the reason why I became a musician The sources are different things, like, you know, I'm always reading different books. They're not necessarily related to music. Uh, maybe I'd, meet, I'd have a conversation with a friend somewhere. Maybe it'll be going out on a drive somewhere and seeing something. And then, you know, you get this idea, this, this, this seed of an idea, that, you know, that maybe this works. And another side of my process is there's a lot of sort of mathematics. Uh, there's a lot of coding involved. So. One of the things I, I do in my process is I try to have a mix of things that works like, it's a, for example, I play with melody. If I introduce melodies, it's a very emotional kind of thing with the oud, for example, then I would transfer it to other instruments. You know, when, we, when I jam or when I perform with um, other musicians, I tend to find myself doing a lot of electronics because it's easy to plug in into a sound system, go loud and, and do things that are unexpected. But um, for me, um, acoustic instruments, especially traditional Middle Eastern instruments, is the thing I, I, I love the most and um, I, I try to practice regularly. And yeah, so this is kind of the corner I have for the oud, which is my main instrument. playing oud when I was in high school, there was this concert, Marcel Khalifa from Lebanon. He had this project called uh, Jadal. It was a two oud kind of piece with a, a bass guitar and percussionist. And I'd never seen oud played that way. And when I was, I remember when I was sitting in the concert watching this, this music sort of come apart, I'm like, this is his masterpiece. You know, like, there is no way he can write music better than this, you know? And, and I'm like, you know, and up until today, I'm waiting for the day where I can, you know, come to come to someone and say, this music, this project that I just worked on is sort of the epitome of everything I've, I've done, you know, like this is, this is it, you know, and, but I, I guess we never, we never get that, you know, it's always something that we're trying to chase. So for me, it's just being able to create that one piece that, or that one project that just, you know, uh, critically, at least, it's not about commercial success. It's more about kind of critical success that that you know really resonates with people. You know, that's that's what I sort of dream of, of, of achieving somehow. I've had a lot of gigs here, and that's this is where I've grown as an artist, like being from here and born and raised, but. I've, uh, the highlights have been the fact that I've been welcomed into a community and I've helped kind of grow that community and I've provided for the community. And I think what drives me more is not so much me performing, but me kind of, the, the whole idea of community gathering. my 
listening to? Um, so what I'm doing is um, I'm taking uh, the sequencer um, and I'm routing it to four different mod uh, four different modules that uh, make sound. One is um, it's called the ensemble oscillator, and another is like a noise kind of drum generator, and then I'm I'm patching that um, to uh, a filter. And I'm taking out the low, the low sounds of the filter, and I'm also using like um, this kind of uh, effects uh, module and making a sound more spatial. So that's that's kind of like you know this sound. You know, it's more spatial. Um, so you hear it from here, but you also hear the most spatial sound of it. So if I remove it, you just hear this. Um, so I'm trying to add layers to what is already existent um, and kind of turn it like use granular synthesis to um, make something that's one sound into multiple different sounds um, so right now I just added like a filter something that, I've been, um, that has been a dream for the past four years has been for me to have my own like community space or like a center, like a sound center, where I either kind of host events or like have it a more educational kind of place for people to learn, an open studio space where people just come and use the equipment, a library space for people to read about sound. Um, but also a place, the way I see it is like, you know, um, Someone calls me like, hey, I want to practice breakdancing. I want to like use your modular sense, or I need a place to like practice. I just want to, I want to play. I'm like, yeah, come over. You know, like that's what I want—a community space for people to openly come and do their thing without having the need to like pay for rent. You know, of a space. You know, like a, a place for the community, but primarily for the sound community. That's that's a dream um, that that I I really hope will. You know, I'll try to work on that. So. I'm finished is good. Which one? I <laughs> think the 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 picket mata. Ah, okay. Picket bulag pala. Picket bulag. This um, the Gallic song is in from one of our, our one of our friends' um, grandma, she has um, what do you call it? Yes, uh, like memory loss. Yeah. Amnesia. No, the sorry. dementia. 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 Yeah, dementia. Yeah, like, yeah. When when you get old and you forget everything, you only stop, stop that memory in that specific year. So we wrote this song for 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 him for his grandma. Inspired, yeah. Inspired, yes. Okay. Most of our songs are inspired by our lives, what we went through, what is happening in our lives. It's like life struggles and, and how we survive. That was our, our inspiration. Make more music, albums, and play in play music in festivals. festivals. That's our like, dream. We want to play in big festivals. Um, big production. We want like a flaming lips type of of production, like grand. Okay, yeah. And yeah, more music. 
We want always we want always to do that. Like more travel and music. Yeah. That's our dream. Uh, we met in the Philippines before, but uh, uh, he was in. Do you want me to say it? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> he uh, was in the reggae band. I, I was in the band. Yeah. Then my brother. I know no, his brother. Yeah. But, but the relationship um, grew through on online. So yeah. I was here. He was in the Philippines back then. So we had one year long distance relationship. Yeah, one and a half year. One and a half year. Okay. <laughs> so I decided to go here. I quit my band there. <laughs> For her. I think that the music brought us, us together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we were a couple. Uh, we we already we are already making music like we just use the tablets and you used like yeah. music software just the tablet. We didn't realize that we making our music. Yeah, yeah. and then why why was born in 2015? Yeah, officially 2015. I remember our first performance we 2016 opened yeah. with a foreign act here. foreign international artists yeah. here in Dubai. <laughs>
while I was in Bahrain for many years, I'd, I'd keep an eye on what's going on here in the UAE and in other Gulf states as well. And what's interesting is, you know, there's some really great bands, but here in the UAE, one of the properties of this place is you have a lot of people passing through, so they would spend two, three years, five years setting up something, and then they would just move away, and a lot of people would forget. I wish I had access to like some kind of a, an archive of all these different music projects that came through the UAE. We always struggle with time. Being parents, Being with parents for yeah. three kids. Time. When it comes to our music, I guess, of course, financial struggle. If we want to um, make more, sometimes, you know, we, we, of course, we prioritize our family before music. And in terms of like being here in uh, the UAE, maybe like creativity versus commercial viability. So sometimes you, it's hard to fit in. And I mean, that's, that's from the, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, it's yes. true. Like, uh, we've been rejected. We've been rejected yeah. many times. <laughs> like, but you understand because, you know. They wanted the commercial, so, I mean, musically. But luckily we have friends that we. There's, uh, there are yeah, still people who appreciate our, our, our craft. Our, even not friends, yeah. That's, I think, one of the great, good thing with music. Challenging. <laughs> We're going to do all commercial just to make enough money. Never. No. You always stuck to your path. Yes. yes. <laughs> we would rather be poor. Not really poor. <laughs> we would rather just stick to our, to what we are doing yes. instead of giving up something that we don't really like, like doing. Yeah. Flipside is really like the best place. Everyone knows um, Shadi, the guy, the owner, and like the founder of Flipside. Like um, the the record store um, in Astrakhan, like it's it's a happening place Astrakhan on its own. But Flipside, like it provides a space for people to just come and listen and, and try out the vinyl. And they have the in-store uh, events on the weekends where uh, some DJs would just come, and it's not a paid thing. Like they just come and they play and. Um, so many people on a given day, you, you'd always find someone from the community who just goes there and just wants to sit down and listen and, and talk with one another. I love that. In Abu Dhabi, a new space is Mizza, Mizza Radio. So um, they're inviting like DJs to, to kind of play sometimes on a on a Saturday or like a Friday evening and sometimes I find myself going there and meeting people from like the Abu Dhabi community. On the 1st of September, I'll be releasing an album called Bank. Um, it's on streaming, it's like a digital album. It's like a sort of like experimental beat hip hop thing, but no rapping. And uh, I'm also working on an album with a Japanese blues guitarist. So he does his guitar improvisations and I play the saxophone and electronics. So that's gonna come out maybe later this year or early next year. Um, yeah, those are, the two, those are the two big things. An installation that I'm working on for my research project, which will be in this room, for example, we'll focus on me putting in field recordings from the Mina Zaid area and looking at the past, present, and speculative future of Mina Zaid, the kind of the, so the soundscape of Mina Zaid. And I'm gonna have like 16 speakers on the floor and then have people shine a light on like these uh, uh, light sensors. And the, the more intense the light, the more intense the sound but also there will be certain objects that will uh, relate to um, the different areas that I'm going to focus on in Mina Zayed, so whether it's the warehouses, the, the food and vegetable market, um, yeah.
For YY, I know we always say that we're releasing our album this year, every year. I say that every year, but it, for some unforeseen yeah. um, reason, we have we have we haven't released that. But this year we've worked on our album. It's already 80% finished. Yeah. So we'll push to release that this year, and it's gonna be exciting. Or early next year. This year or early next year, but this year. Yeah. And more performance. Where's the next one? Hopefully. We're doing something in October. Maybe October. Yeah. Hopefully, there's there's more early. Before that. that, yeah. Yeah. You know, I have in the past played music with them, but never in this kind of situation. And I think for them to come to Sharjah and for them to come, especially in this temporary kind of space that we're setting up at the Sharjah Art Foundation for music, you know, I hope that it's kind of the beginning of some new kind of local music community, you know, where people come together and, and do things. And, you know, it's sad that we had to wait until now. I wish I, I wish I would have done it immediately from, from day one when I arrived in Sharjah, you know. And, and, I, and also I feel like it's unfair that we were trying to represent kind of the UAE community through just three different acts. You know, of course, there's a lot more going on in the UAE when it comes to music, but um, we have limitations in, you know, in who it is we, or limitations in time mostly and resources. And But I, I just hope that this documentary and being able to kind of sit down with the others and try to make music with them, that would sort of encourage more. Um, so I'm, I'm just really excited about, about all this. Yeah. Let's do it.